been to Aqua Safari lately? Let me share my experience with you at the new Aqua Safari Resort. When you arrive, you're greeted by warm smiles to Aqua Safari and introduced to your 24 hour butler who already has your itinerary sorted. Enjoy water sports activities like jet ski rides, kayaking, water sliding, flyboarding, and castnet fishing. You can even have your lunch here on the boat cruise. Experience horseback riding, tennis, and some golfing amongst a host of. other activities let the talk Have you been to Aqua Safari lately? Let me share my experience with you at the new Aqua Safari Resort. When you arrive, you're greeted by warm smiles to Aqua Safari and introduced to your 24 hour butler who already has your itinerary sorted. Enjoy water sports activities like jet ski rides, kayaking, water sliding, flyboarding, and castnet fishing. You can even have your lunch here on the boat cruise. Experience horseback riding, tennis, and some golfing amongst a host of other activities. Let the tour guides take you through the sceneries of the Volta River, the mangrove forest, the friendliness of the animals, local and exotic birds, while you pet and feed them. You can have this large space for your conferences, corporate retreats, and so many activities as part of the package. We chose to have our breakfast with a beautiful sunrise right in front of our cabin. We had an amazing experience and I can't wait to return for more. Visit Aqua Safari Eco Resort in Ghana, bringing you closer to nature. Hello, this is Lawyer Wisdom of Wisemart Solicitors. Join me this and every Friday on OT TV from 8 to 9 p.m. for all your UK immigration matters. I hope to see you there. Thank you.
today. Um, just to start off, my name is Akus, um, Akus Yobu Suisiedu. I'm commonly known as Dr. Akus. I'm currently, just a little bit about myself, I'm currently a general practitioner at um, a hospital in Coventry in the UK. So yes, for now that is it. I'll leave my co-host to introduce herself and then we'll tell you all about what we're going to be doing tonight. So thank you for joining us this evening. Hello, hello everyone. Um, my name is Abena. So I am a trainee accountant and I am a civil servant. So that's that that's it for now about me as well. And like Michael who said, thank everyone. Thank you all for joining today. And we'll go straight into it. So today we're talking about women's health. And most of the times, myself included, we normally think women's health is just about our reproductive systems and uh, giving birth and whatnot. But women's health uh, covers quite a lot it's about mental health our physical well-being our emotional social and a lot of things isn't that right Dr Hose? yeah well that's right actually so um women's health I think a lot of the time like you said you know when you're talking to a doctor like me I can <laughs> I could go on forever about women's health and uh I could literally we can take days you know, or weeks to talk about all the different things that happens. When we can talk about men your menstrual cycle. We can talk about the breast. If you think about just a woman's body alone, there's so many things going on, you know, your hormones, the way your brain connects with everything, you know, when it comes to childbirth, lactating. So there's so many things. So guys, having said this, I'm going to introduce our expert um, by the name of Dr. Koju Asamini. He's the expert in women's health. He's going to talk about uh, not everything that we've mentioned today because we will never finish if we go into it. <laughs> but he, he's going to talk about three important things. And yeah, I'll just leave him to, to start with it. And whilst he's talking, please remember that you can um, be taking notes, ask questions at the end. You don't have to ask just questions about women's health. You can also ask general questions because as a general practitioner, this is the space where you get to ask any question about health that you want. So Dr. Kujasamani, let me leave it with you. Would you first like to tell us about who you are, what you do, and why you've decided to come and tell us about women's health today? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you once again for having me here. Thank you, Dr. Akos and Abina. Um, my name is Kujasamani, Dr. Kujasamani. I'm a medical doctor. I have interest in obstetric and gynecology. I have decided to sacrifice my life for women because I am passionate about empowering women to prioritize their overall um, well-being. So I look forward today to sharing valuable insights, tips and strategies that can help women maintain optimal health and hygiene. So that is the reason why I'm here today and I hope we have fun while we do that because it's going to be interactive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, thank you for that introduction. So, um, could you? Yeah. What is women's health? Women's health. Um, first of all, um, I'll start by saying that women's health is basically living healthy. I mean, as a human being, you're supposed to live healthy. You're supposed to make sure that you are functioning well. Like you have to get to your hundred percent capacity to be able to function as a human not only women alone, but then it also applies to men. So basically, we are actually looking at 100% efficacy for women today. And before I even start, I want every man here to understand that women's health is essential for the well-being of individuals, families, and then communities. Because when you improve a woman's health, it leads to a healthier society overall. So, men, please, if you know you have a woman in your life, your mom, um, your friend, your partner, or whatever that it is, try as much as possible to prioritize it because you're going to enjoy them having around because we can't do anything without women overall but because as a man or as a woman born of a woman, you are supposed to make sure that women have a better place and then their general well-being is okay to be able to have like happiness in the society. Dr. Akos, I hope that works for you. You know, before you start, somebody's uh, mentioned in the comments that like, can you blend the language for people to understand? So oh, I'm okay. not sure I'm not... to say that, sir. Can you with the chica graph him? Or um, I, I'm not but but anyway, even so you can even put a bit of <laughs> in it as well. I like, think you blend all of it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> may try. May try a cat. She in the broth for no cacao. 
But I wouldn't be so fra. Why? No, I know they are very dinka crowd, but I better try. I better try. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so um, without much ado, um, thank you for having me again, and let's dive into this essential conversation together. So first of all, my focus is going to be on um three things: physical, mental, and then social. When I say physical, um. A person's body and its ability to perform their daily activities effectively. So looking at that, that is the physical aspect. Then you come to the mental aspect. That's a person's emotion, um, psychological and cognitive well-being. Being it the mood, the stress management, coping skills, and the overall mental resilience is very important. To my third one, social. A person's ability to form and maintain healthy relationship. We live in a community. We interact with people. And then it is a very important for us to have our skills together to engage in meaningful so, um, social interactions and then feel connected to others. Um, what are some of the health concerns, um, important health concerns faced by women? It includes reproductive health issues, breast cancer, mental health disorders, which I feel in Africa, we don't really pay attention to mental health. That is the reason why I might spend a little um, time, more time on uh, mental health because we really don't take it serious, but it is very, very important. Additionally, we have to understand that women are at risk um, for certain chronic conditions. I think we already know this, diabetes, we have our hypertension and, and all of that. Coupled with the fact that they have, as a woman, they have a lot. I mean, they'll go through the pregnancy state, they'll go through men uh, menstruation, Pregnancy and then menopause, it's a whole lot. Their life cycle, it's a whole lot combined together. So, um, first of all, I'll touch on reproductive health. For the reproductive health, um, it it's comprises of um, a, um, some range of issues, like including family planning, pregnancy care, and then prevention of sexual transmitted infections. Um, it is very important that we include family planning in our daily lives as a couple or as a woman it's very important for you to know uh, i may not be able to go into details but i'm just going to surface it so that we understand because i want to believe that most of the women here probably have an idea but they don't take it serious why do i think that um, they are supposed to take it serious you have to have access to contraception and then family planning services which i feel some people probably don't pay attention to but then it is very necessary that it's to know that it actually empowers a woman to make informed decisions about their reproductive health and family planning goals. You need to plan your family with your um, your husband, your you yourself. I mean, what do you want? What do you want to do? How many um, children do you want to have? You wouldn't want to overcrowd your house. Probably you may not be able to take it, care of all of them. That is the reason why you are supposed to have access to family planning services. And you need to get to your healthcare provider or healthcare services to actually take you through. We have heard about contraceptions and, and all of that, but you know that the use of contraceptions actually advances human rights of people to determine the number of uh, the number and spacing of their children. That is why it is very important because you wouldn't want to be a and the way pressure so and I mean, because resources one, but and you wouldn't be able to continue and then do that because it's going to put stress on yourself, which also coupled back to the fact that it can actually have um. A mental health disorder on you because you may not be able to carry it on so some of these contraceptions of which i think we all know the oral contraceptive pills implants injectables patches um, vaginal rings and all that but one thing i would want us to um, pay attention to that the only contraceptive method which is condom we can prevent both pregnancy and then transmission of sdi the reason I'm focusing on this is because I, I spoke about SDI that we will actually look, um, we'll actually touch on it. So we should try as much as possible to make use of it. Sabi, we'll be one more be catch or say, or not your own pair, but Mr. To the younger ones over here, please don't put your um, your life at risk. 
don't put yourself in danger. So only me are like on train or because at any day you don't know what you are taking from the, the person. It is not about the pregnancy itself because say I share in our setting, people are even more scared about pregnancy than sexual sexually transmitted infections. Which sometimes I find it a little bit funny because pregnancy you can actually go through it successfully. But if you go ahead and then you contract any disease or any STI, it might be very difficult. What if you get the deadly HIV, which you might not even have the end goal of it? A DNA BC, Wangasa, it is going to take a toll on you, you and your family, and then people around you. That is the reason why we have to pay attention to that. When it comes to um, that phase of you taking care of yourself, the um, pl um, family planning, the contraceptions, now you come to the maternal health care and then pregnancy related issues. After you've planned your family, with your husband or your partner, whatever you are doing, you've passed through that stage successfully. Bonibian count with my aqua the second stage where it be a and a bim. It is very necessary that you improve your access to quality mater uh, maternal health care. Imagine say be out here home now, be oba fa nyinseng na oba hospital nyinseng eo heavily pregnant not otimutu so no oba. Um, a lot can happen. I mean, the motor, no, it's not even safe. Even the car and I had a ban is not even safe. Whether you are probably even on, um, in a V8, maybe our rough road, be so an acid, you say there can be a lot of complications that can actually happen on your way to the hospital. So it is very important that during that phase, you would pay attention to your pregnancy. Oh, I know I will want to have but it is very necessary. So the moment you get to that stage when you are pregnant, you are supposed to be in touch. More like you have to have a relationship with your healthcare provider. That is your obs, um, your obstetrics um, doctor. I mean, if any issue, be uh, I don't think that sometimes yeah, ma'am, I'm not only to me endure some of these things, but the younger ones, the new generation that are probably coming, you know, they are not able to endure some of these things that are uh, coupled to them because it's all bounced back to the mental stress. Because we born ma, it be our own to me. So a woman during the mental health um, pregnancy period, no. I feel that to me, I always advise people, say, the moment Unim say, you are supposed to have a relationship with your doctor. And then if anything, the least thing that you see, you are supposed to go back to him. Like you are supposed to talk to him, constant communication, because you wouldn't want anything to happen to you. So um, in these cases, you know, we try as much as possible to um, prevent maternal deaths, which are actually preventable by timely management, by a skilled professional working in a supportive environment. I'll go ahead from the um, I'll go ahead and then touch on the sexually transmitted infections. Um, to me, as a woman, I think it is much more important if you find now say be man I be a menene kwa kushi anasa me pesa menene bobrano ya rebi ni no more than a juma or ya anasa ndisi ke bi awo because. So or Yaribi won't know the man as a Yarini to mean to us here. If we can't treat whatever that you pick up from your partner, you are going to live with it forever. But as any parkono, so when you see KB and as when you the person can actually work towards it. Both of you can actually work towards it. So some of the questions that you are supposed to probably ask, but or if you decide to start a relationship with someone now, uh, the most important thing to me that you should probably do is to go to their hospital and then run series of tests. What people don't know is that there are about 30 different bacteria and viruses and parasites that are known to be STIs. But in the memo, there are three. And I said, four B. Obetic, I cry, I see gonorrhea, yes, syphilis, maybe a chlamydia. But there are more, like I said, over 30. But when they are here prevalent, like a year, and then I'm in the same way, in the hospitals, and then they come back, and then they I don't even think that people even know say, the outbreak of monkeypox during sexual intercourse. You can probably uh, you can get um, monkeypox. People are not even privy to that information. Ebola virus here by a between you can actually get it. There's another one called Zika virus and all of that. People don't pay attention to these things because someone finally say any big deal. Be and I say it should be, a, but it is very important for us. So anytime you start a relationship. The first thing that I would advise and say, make you sure someone run it, the necessary test because we'll be back and ask them, but you know, before I would, maybe I'll bet them to only be a 
be build the one or come, be no cock of fire, a bonny beer barber too. So, or be on so a bonny three moop or no yare be one or more on country. Why dream bell save your penny and answer you, sir? But it is not like that. Even when you are married, it is even necessary, say, Unu Kunu, you be taking regular tests because Nipa and Sa, um, Nipa, a memma dear, Sabi, it make us a memma and time per intinifi. I mean, not to say anything to spite the men but at the end of the day i feel that it is very important even the women i mean insist on it you should have regular checkups and then all that anything can happen you can pick it from any other place so that you don't leave your life to regret it at the end of the day um just get to know that some of these stis are preventable it is very necessary now imagine getting an sti infection not only a fat ninseng which made the mark right now through a bia or man or no for an assay bia on yem no cramp no it can lead to um prematurity a cranny weights bare less obenia congenital deformities in the sense that the body nan shut down for me ye who bones and yam maybe as a form and who bones and to me for me and that or the inna saba bea ka amobia hepatitis b the bia it will amount for some more in here but most of the time they don't pay attention to it but it is a very big deal you can prevent it by um, going to your healthcare um, um, professional, a skilled healthcare professional. You run a series of tests. They see it's a BB or not yet to us I mean, early screening and then OBBS here, prevention is better than cure. BB of all kind, maybe minimum better, but Sani a kind. But you go, you have your safe and then highly effective vaccinations, which are available for two viral STIs um, hepatitis B and then HPV. HPV is a cause of um, cervical cancer. And then I think it's very prevalent because we don't really pay attention to that. Treatment, dear. In some American, all the things that I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about treatment because it is highly advisable that you go to your healthcare professional and then you talk to them because sometimes you tell some, um, some people something and then they decide to um, treat themselves. But Patrol Medical School, you know, yeah, six years, Ober Corps and Ghani, so we can bear three and now four and now five. And also, the so I'll actually advise that management and then treatment, I won't talk about it. I'll just hit on the science and some of these things that you're supposed to know. If you have any problem, you go to the hospital and then do um, what's it called, further test, or you talk to your healthcare professional. Um, our behavior change is key. You can meet someone who is very stubborn and the person might probably not listen to you whilst you need... Cause you have to take care of yourself. Sometimes you have to really be, um, you have to be selfish. So like I said, left to me alone, prioritize finding out if your partner has something that you really need to know rather than where the person is working and then money because there are some um, diseases or there are some infections, money can't treat it and then all of that. So I feel that it is very important. I'll touch on um, family planning, planning your family. I'll touch on the pregnancy um certain well one thing that i also for, forgot that is that if you know you are pregnant and you have any chronic condition if you have anything at all or oh, also crowd your choir catch your doctor and patrol or also would they have any effect on my baby or oh, asthma crowd your choir catch and say would they have anything even if your head is paining you if you have chronic headache let your doctor know that you have chronic headache is it going to affect because he will be in a better position to advise you we are not supposed to sit down and then believe, say, oh, it's just a headache and nothing will happen or it is fine. I'll just take paracetamol because it is over counter and then all of that. It doesn't work that way. The least thing that you have, the moment you are pregnant, you go to your doctor, you book your ANT and then you tell them everything. They run everything with you. And I feel so they can take it from there and then you'll be fine. And then you have a happy home. Um health services for screening and treatment um for um, um stis during your pregnancy and then even after you have given birth it's very important that you take your before your during and then after you go you run your test they check if there's any problem with you if there's nothing they guide you through your pregnancy phase during um your pregnancy phase it is very important that you also go through a series of tests if it is necessary and when you are done and then there is something that comes out to you, they are supposed to keenly pay attention to it and then help you go through that. So um, that will be it for the reproductive health. I'll come to breast health 
And there's something that I've realized about, um, should I say, the African setting. The moment we see Breast Cancer Awareness Month, people don't really pay attention to it, but it is very important because breast cancer is very is prevalent, like among Fonya Power Ghana, but because they don't pay attention to it, but early detection um, cancer through regular screenings can actually help you overcome some of these things. You may never know. So it's very important that you visit the hospital. I think it's important in general that anytime you go to the hospital as a woman, you try as much as possible to ask questions. That is the reason why we are there. Just ask questions. Don't feel that it is too much and ask the BBC because it is your own health. So one to now they are now that made the measure it really makes my trauma on my trauma. What I can do for you, I can do for you. But if it get worse, I may not be able to do anything about it. So it is very important that when you go to your hospital with um, when you do your regular checkups, you speak about all these things. But breast in particular, I mean, who doesn't like breasts? Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, mothers and and fathers and uncles and aunties. When you give birth, your child would have to suck breasts. The men would have to, even men, even at an older age, they still need it. I mean, for pleasure purposes and, and all of that. So why don't you even pay attention to it? Because the moment you lose it, it becomes a whole burden and then all of that. So screening, importantly, the screening guidelines for breast cancer recommendations, your mammograms, clinical breast exams, and then self-exam. It is very important. Now, there are a lot of videos Oko YouTube self examination. One sorry, if you are doing that, air check. If you are sure no for an answer, be sure now for this. Oh, be a bad bishop. Be a bishop. Not normal. Yeah, be a. Yeah, be a. A walk and a walk. A walk. When you hear na no one call hospital na ya 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 shama. In Ghana, mammogram is done at the age of thirty five and above, and yet we be a no sorry or quite quite mammogram and it can but the primary. Screening modality for breast cancer and a clinical breast examination, a self exam. So you can do it yourself. You can be in your room or when you wake up in the morning, when you are bathing, now you now feel this oh, there is something else or, or not for no, your breast has changed a little bit of color. And then it should, it should raise an alarm and then rush to the hospital and then go and then ask because it is very, very important. Um, support um, and uh, i know there are organizations who take it upon themselves doing breast cancer awareness man they'll be going around and then they'll be talking to people will be on what i said many times but sometimes just spare like two or three or four minutes because it's not everything that you may be like you will know that is an idea like here i can't even tell you everything about breast cancer but at the end of the day when you go to the hospital i feel said it's very important that they will give you a rundown of what you need to know what you're supposed to do and then all of that which will actually help you but i won't dive into more about breast cancer because we have october and as the as time goes we'll be talking about breast cancer and then all of that but you should know that it's very key and it's something that is a big deal in africa i mean in the whole world but the most important thing, thing is early detection just have it at the back of your mind early detection when we see it early we can do something then again prevention is better than cure now i'll move on to mental health which is very important and we don't pay attention to it because maybe a free banner um in our backgrounds maybe in africa nigeria wherever you're coming from we really don't pay attention to the mental health because we feel that it is our culture and you are supposed to um, toughen up your skin, which I don't agree to that. If you need help, you ask. Prevalence of mental health disorders in women you know, um, disproportionately you know, it affects a lot of women, but they don't say, they don't speak about it, such as certain things such as depression. It's a mental health disorder, anxiety, eating disorders. You may not pay attention to it, but Oh, okay, Diane, she likes eating. Sometimes it's not normal. That is not how the human being, the, the, the human body itself can consume certain amount of food. But the person will be overdoing it and then we tag the person and say, oh, okay, Diane. Then the person now gains weight, moves to the next level, then we start calling the person, Obolo. Then it becomes a thing, which is not supposed to be like that. 
slowly, slowly, this person will get to a point. It's either the person accepts it as it is, or the person will mentally break down. Women also often experience unique life transition because the, the woman body is so unique that, like I said, they have the, the menstrual phase, they'll go through the pregnancy, they'll go through menopause. All these phases that they will go through, you know, it's a psych, the, 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 the body goes through what we call physiological circle. It happens internally, you don't see it. But what you see outside, we tend to give comments about it. And some of these comments are not even encouraging because when a, a woman is pregnant, you can tell that this woman will become big, the person's feet sometimes, and sometimes you, the man, you'll be sitting there and you'll be asking yourself, is this the woman that I got married to? But you have to stay with the woman. Throughout that time, the woman needs your support. The woman needs someone to talk to and hormonal imbalances. These hormones are inside. Then again, it's not as if say, the hormones are outside, so you can press this woman and then tell this woman to actually shut up or keep quiet or don't do this, don't do that. That is not how it is. That is, called, that is why it's called physiological. You can't see they are working on their own, just like a car, a machine. There are certain things you may see outside, but there are certain things that are inside. You can never do anything about it, but it has to go through that process. So um, doing childbirth, caregiving, and work-life balances. Some of uh, our women or our mothers, they go to work, and then they go through a whole lot of stress. Imagine, before a woman wakes up, let me just give you a short scenario. Before a woman wakes up, a married woman, a married woman wakes up early in the morning, they have kids. The woman will probably have to go and then bath the kids. Then after bathing the kids, she would have to bath. After bathing, she has to prepare breakfast for the kids. Whilst the man is sitting down waiting for everything to be prepared so that he can also go to work. So breakfast will be prepared for them and probably separately. The woman will have to cook lunch, will probably have to cook breakfast. Now when everyone is done, she has to go to work. She goes to work another stress, come back home, make sure that she prepares for the family to come and then eat again. Then what happens she will come and then have little rest wake up and then continue with that cycle and it continues like that till the rest of the time that she will probably leave earth which is a lot i'm not saying men don't stress men don't go through anything but sometimes the women need our support it's very important because a woman can go say, oh media my bread media my ac and this and that and we don't pay attention to it i feel it is very important Sometimes to trauma, domestic violence, and socioeconomic factors. A woman, you always hear a woman saying, say, media me your bar, a woman has needs. So a woman wants to um, um, do the hair, do makeup, do the, the nails and all of that, just to look good, to please the husband or to actually look presentable out there. If they are not able to afford such life or something of that sort, they become one way or the other depressed. They look at people and then the moment they see them, they become depressed, which also contribute to mental health issues among women. We don't pay attention to it, but it is very necessary that we pay attention to some of these small, small things because women actually like attention. Um, there's also um, stigma and then barriers um, one way or the other. It's like, Oba efa bibimua ontiminka. Because in the society where we are coming from, so if you've paid attention in the generation that we've come, you know, your friend might make a friend be say, a woman who knows the rights, oh, where they know my rights, and this and then that. It is a defensive wall that they've built um, around themselves because they've heard stories of our mothers and some of the stress that they went through. So they don't want to go through the same thing. So they actually build walls and they better say, oh, get away, dear, be an mommy, we're an lady, we are That is not it. Even that one crumpled to that extent where they'll build that walls around them and then they'll be talking anyhow. It is not normal. I have a doctor who always says, eh, 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 be be a normal. I always fight with him, say, be be a normal. And your normal, sir. So about best story, then you feel, say, the moment you talk to her, then she's rude. She's telling you, say, you can't tell me this and then that. And they said they are taking over the world, which I agree, but sometimes they should also tone it down a little bit. So I feel we should pay attention. And as a woman, if you have a problem, seek um, professional help, talk to someone, someone you can actually trust. And then men and then um, women, if a woman should approach you and then tell you something that they are going through, they are the ones who know what they are going through. And then they are the only people who can actually feel it. If you can't relate, don't brush them off. And then don't be taking people's issue out there. There's a reason why they came to you. And then if you have the privilege...
to talk to someone who tells you, I am depressed, the least you can actually do is to give the person a listening ear. If you can't do it, refer the person to a health um, a professional. Um, I'll go ahead and um, I'll, I'll address some health disparities in our society, like I already mentioned. Um, understanding social determinants of health, our social, economic, environmental factors, such as income, education, housing, access to health care, influences humans, um, women's health outcomes. If a woman is comfortable, trust you me, if the woman is okay, is living okay, you will benefit a lot. Like I said in the beginning, that we benefit as individuals and a community because a woman, a, a man or a woman, born of a man or a woman, it's a woman who gives birth to you. It's a woman who brings you to this world. So the moment the, 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 moment the woman is okay, and the woman is comfortable, you would actually enjoy. And then you would, there will be, should I say there will be peace? Because you say a, a, ma, a hard dream or something of that sort, but sometimes it is not like that. This is the reason why we have to empower women for better health. It is very important because some of these things we overlook it. You say, man, a num, a dream, you know, but it's not always like that. The women take better pills, like better pills than we, the men. True to be told, if you don't know, um, women actually endure pain better than men. Sure, I will go back to this. If a woman comes to the labor ward and the woman is delivering, to me, I always advise that the man should be there and then see what they go through. It's a powerful thing. And honestly, I want to say, yes, I'm not going to but I'm not going to be able to do it. Because for a baby, when the baby comes out, look at how big the baby is. And for the baby to come out from a human being, they go through that stress and their body will adjust and it's like their body will get destroyed and then get repaired again. Yeah, the Bema tools is here and I say, yeah, Bema and what? It will be very difficult. So we have to give reverence to them. We have to always make them know that they are actually important because what they go through is not easy nine months and sometimes over nine months some people have it before that and sometimes pregnancy complications and all of that it is very difficult so during those times where they are having their emotional um they are going through their hormonal imbalances and then all of that it's all bounces back to the mental health because if they are not mentally strong they will go through a lot and they might probably not even be successful throughout that process so they need us and I encourage each and every man, a lady, or whoever, that if you have any woman in your community, your sister, your daughter, your mom, even the older women, I mean, try as much as possible to make them feel comfortable. One thing that I know that we don't pay attention to is the menopausal age. Because uh, when it comes to menopause, with menopause is basically, it marks the end of a woman's menstrual cycle. And then when they get to that um, stage, it's, I don't know, it's a different ball game together. And I feel that every stage of a woman, every stage that they get to, it is very important that they try as much as possible to get our support so that we help them um, achieve what they are supposed to achieve because the burden is only on them and they are the only people who can actually handle these things. And then if they are not able to express it to us better, we ourselves, we become very confused. So they need us. We have to soften them. We have to like try as much as possible to be emotionally, social, um, emotionally, physically, and most importantly, our spiritual background is also important because some of these things are not normal. But when it comes to some of these things, we don't attach it to um, spirituality and then all of that. So um, lastly, I'm going to end with um, um, empowering women for a better health. We have to try as much as possible to support women in leadership healthcare. If we have a lot of women in healthcare services, they will be able to have influence on the general population. And then we have to promote um, literacy and then self advocacy. If they know, the, the, if you know what you're doing, it is important. If you know what you're going through, if you know the state, some people don't know. Some people come from the rural areas and they don't know what is even going on. They lack basic education on some of these things. We have to engage in community, um, engaging the community to improve 
a woman's health, which I feel is very important. If there are any groups or any online, some of these things, when you get it for free, you just join, you listen, and then you pick one or two from it. You wouldn't be able to know everything. But then, I mean, something might just pass through your ears and then you just pick one thing, which is going to be um, a wholesome for you. You're going to take it to the rest of your life. And then it will benefit you. It will benefit the community. It will benefit people who don't even have any idea about it. Um, so I'll just leave it here because we don't have much time and I'll take any questions. And as time goes on, whilst we continue to do this every Wednesday, I hope so, we'll be touching on some of these things one by one so that everyone will probably have a fair understanding of some of the things we deal with in our daily lives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kujo. That was no easy task talking about women's uh, health in 20 or so minutes, but I think you did quite well. Um, we <laughs> No, very well, sorry. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, but we'll go on a short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll take questions, as he said. We'll have a bit of question time, and we'll take all any and all questions after that. Thank you. This is Lawyer Wisdom of WiseMart Solicitors. Join me this and every Friday on OT TV from 8 to 9 p.m. for all your UK immigration matters. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, we'll just like to, uh, again, just um, acknowledge everybody who's joined us today. Thank you very much for being here. We'd like to thank OT Media. We'd like to thank all our sponsors. We'd like to thank all our faithful watchers and listeners who are here with us. Please, this is the time to ask questions. I can see that some hands are up, so we're just going to facilitate this time. And yeah, ask anything you want, general health questions or women's health. Yes, yeah, so should we start uh, with... I've got hands up here from Jonas Amatifiru. Yeah. Uh, um, good evening. Um, my question is, but before my question, Doc, you said something about uh, a two or two are a seat, like something about some proverb, like a two or two are a seat, like a two or two are a And the thing is, me, I don't know what I don't know what came over me when I met my wife. I too, I said a lot of things. Even I added at the time of birth, I will be there. That day I collapsed. <laughs> you understand? So I wish I never said it. I honestly, but I've I, well, I, I'm not gonna. I'll be careful next time. My next life. So um, the thing is, no, these manifest stages you're talking about. I'm speaking from my mom when she. Got Got to that stage. I feel like renting a house. I feel like moving in, but I wasn't working by then. But I, I wish I could have that money. I would have rent. I would have moved out and rent somewhere because it was like you know. What I mean, you are having another child with tantrum. <laughs> Every little thing that you think will make her happy, rather is the opposite. <laughs> and to make it worse, she can leave things, especially her mobile phone, in the fridge, <laughs> and you call her and it's things like that. So, is 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 this something that as a dog? Is this something that women can skip it with medication or something? Or is something that there's no way you can bribe it? Like you know, I mean, like in a way of like you know, bribing your body to skip it. Okay, all right. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr. Jonas. Um, when it gets to menopause, a lot of things happen. So, like I said, the beginning of the woman cycle from menstruation, they have things that they go through. They go through their pregnancy stage and then they go to their menopause stage. That is like the end of it. Now, what what happens to my understanding is that 
everything that they've been through in life, it gets to the menopause and it's like a reversal of it. So if you pay attention, the way a child will behave, that is how a woman will behave. So it's like they are going back to their normal, how they actually used to behave when they get there. So certain things they are not supposed to make a big deal about. Ubons or master, it's not more kasa and tisa or catching so old now, but chair, old now, but chair, and then all of that. All these things are hormonal imbalances. And it happens in within, like I mentioned before. There is nothing that you can actually do about it. That, But then they can go through it. But there is something you can actually do. What is management and then support? You have to support them through it. If you understand the phase that they are going through, you will be able to help them. Some of the support, um, support you can actually give them is lifestyle modification, healthy life habits, like regular exercise, balanced nutrition, they, they eat well, um, stress management, and they have adequate sleep. These things, we don't pay attention to it. Regular exercise will actually help you a lot. The moment you exercise, you realize that you become refreshed. It's like certain okay. things, you, you put it aside. Almost like, or caught not quite exercise, but you don't even have, you feel so your body is referred like you are really energized. Yeah. You eat well, yeah. you have adequate sleep. It actually helps. These are some of the basic, basic stuff you can actually do. Um, since you brought this menopause thing, I would want to touch on um, osteoporosis. And sometimes old age, over here, no, I can say, it be an name, like when they walk and then all of that. Sometimes they might say, say they feel the, the pain in the bone and some of these things. You probably investigate and they've never had anything of that sort. There is something that happened. Um, estrogen, one of the hormones, you know, the moment you get to menopausal age, you know, um, it becomes less. So what it happens is that some of these things strengthen the bones and then all of that. So you realize that it becomes the, 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 the bones become brittle and sometimes they can even break their legs and then all that so sometimes when you go to the hospital you realize that the old age people they, they tend to break their their bones a lot so regular mm. exercises eating well checking your um calcium and then some of these levels when you go there when you go to the hospital you'll be previewed to some of these things so mr jonas um you have to bear with your mom because she went through it and then brought you into this world and these are some of the few things you can actually do to help and then support her it's very very important it's very important that you ask that question you know, sorry, um, just to touch on coming from a woman's point of view, there's some language there that Dr. Kojo used that I wasn't very happy with. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, okay, again, I apologize that, that. Let me hear what I take my way back. <laughs> no, it was just, you know, like, again, you know what, Jonas, yeah, being a woman and also a doctor, like you said, I understand these things. I wish I could skip the whole menstruation thing because that bleeding once a month is very annoying. And then I wish I could skip menopause. Trust me, I'm working on it. So maybe <laughs> in some years to come, we'll be able to skip it or get some medication that can help us. But yeah. uh, what could you said when you said uh, there's some things that they get mad about that they shouldn't get mad about? <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't get mad about it but to them it means something to them Do you know, these yeah. are some of the things that men don't understand mm. you know you feel like maybe women are just nagging or women are just getting mad about this for no reason but you know they have their own reasons and this is also part of this don't worry i know you didn't mean in a, in a you know. <laughs> but i'm just saying you know it's these are part of the understanding or part of the supporting things that you can support so there, there might be something that in your opinion you think that this is not something she should be talking about mm. If she's talking about it, you just need to support her through it. You need to say, okay, I understand why that you're upset about this. I am sorry, whatever, you know, like, so just support her through it, like uh, like you're saying. Um, yeah, and that was it, really. Yeah, okay, so to, to, um, um, to wrap it up, you know, so um, I've, at a point, I feel like everything around women, men have to get the blame. In, later in their life, <laughs> so I started. I started doing some research, and I realized that everything that has a, is doesn't go well with women. They have to name it with men, menopause, men, menstruation, men, <laughs> mental health, men. Like, yeah, yeah, bonnie ben, yeah, yeah. But I'm busy saying, yeah, yeah, bonnie ben. Because are you not the problem? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank no, that's crazy. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah, I'm over. laughs> Yeah, thank for you. that That's question, important. I can see that Yao Biden's uh, hands is up as well. Yao, do you want to ask your question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for your insightful 
topic. I have several questions, but I don't know if time will permit me, but for now, I'll ask two most important questions on my list. First, uh, let's cast our mind back, back home in Africa, in Ghana. We see young ladies on the internet selling all sorts of drugs, all sorts of medication. One of them is, sorry if you have like elderly people among us, they say pussy sweetener or pussy tighten or something. They're the internet is, oh, once I use it, my my private pipe becomes so sweet, becomes so tight and all, and all sorts of things. Uh, you being the, a woman health expert, does this drugs or that this herbal medication really, really, really works per the, per the situation we have out there that, oh, yeah. once I hit it, I was able to grab this man once he kissed my. I was able to grab him to myself. My something becomes so small and tight and all sorts of things. Two, yeah. we are talking about we are talking about sex and then like protection and all about like pregnancy and all of things. You know that that, that this brother of mine who that's like about it, about pregnancy. For him, he said like he pulled out, so he didn't get it inside. You understand, and then he said, they, they are being like, like Nancy, uh, like, is it possible if you can show us the rightful way we can do that, or is it how we can really pull out and then there don't be any like, uh, like complications after all this like excitement and enjoyment during sex? Thank you very much, doctor. All okay. right, thank you, y'all, for that question. I think you know, they're very important questions, um, and yeah, I'm gonna leave uh. Dr. Asamini to answer that. But again, if you have any questions, just write, raise your hand. If you don't want to talk, you can text in the, in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook, you can text through the comments. If you've got our numbers, you can message us. Whatever way you want to ask, ask the question, please do. Uh, we're here to answer all health questions, not just women's health. So, Dr. Uh, Dr. that's over to you. Okay. Thank you, um, Dr. Akos. Um, yeah. Um, um, honestly, I don't believe in some of these things that they actually sell. Um, I believe as a woman, you need to study your woman, whether your wife, whether your partner. I mean, there's no limitations to that. It's very open. So whoever you are with, I feel you should study your partner, what works for the woman or what works for the man. I don't believe in any tighten cream and whatever that it is. First of all, I feel it is ignorance because the vagina itself is a muzzle. Ask yourself if a baby can actually come through that small opening and at the end of the day when your 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 what's it called your body goes through all the process it's able to come back to it normal size there's nothing they don't use any cream it goes through its physiological process it opens when it's necessary it closes when it is done you can't everyone is was created in a different way you can probably go somewhere and people will be telling you when you buy this cream, when you do this, when you do that, it is going to work. It will make whatever sweet or whatever. It doesn't make anything sweet. I haven't experienced it before and I don't intend on experiencing it because some of these things that you introduce to your body, the body sees these things as a foreign thing that you actually come out. Then you put problems to yourself. You bring problems to your body. You destroy your body. So some of these tightening creams and all of that, to me, it doesn't work. It depends on who you are probably having um, sexual intercourse with. Some are big, some are small, whatever it is. Men are very selfish when it comes to sexual intercourse. Most people actually think about themselves. They just want to please themselves. But like I said, this whole sexual intercourse thing is an act. You need to study your partner. What works for this person? It's not what you are doing that is going to satisfy the man. If the man is going to enjoy it, the man will enjoy it. If he's not going to enjoy it, the person is not going to enjoy it. So these creams, to me, I advise that we don't go for it because you're actually introducing something foreign to your body. And the body, one way or the other, one day, one day, is actually going to react. Um, that is one. And then the second, um, the best way to handle these two, if you are scared of pregnancy <laughs> and you know you can't actually use a condom, then abstain. If you can't abstain, use a condom. Pull out, that thing that we always call pull out. There is something called, um, um, what is it called? Normally in a layman's language, I mean, the younger ones, they call it cum. 
your sperm before you actually um, release or ejaculate there are little ones that you ejaculate in the process even those ones are even dangerous the little little ones that you even do and then you feel sometimes as a man you might probably feel that something has really left but that is not the real sperm but that they, we call it pre -comp. those ones are even dangerous and it can actually cause a lot so if you feel that pull out is not going to work she also like it's very important if you know and you are scared if you are scared why do you even go and do it in the first place that's the first question i should be asked if you are scared why do it because you are doing it for pleasure purpose but you know the complication but you go ahead and then you take the risk and then it happens so to me our advice like i said you are presenting two things first of all you are preventing pregnancy and then you are preventing sti so um yeah um your friend you should talk to your friend that he should start practicing using condom or he should abstain or better still like i said contra um, contraception they have different they have different different method they can talk to the partner and then they can go for one just like family planning like i mentioned earlier they can plan and then decide okay fine we don't have to have kids right now this and this is what we can do when you go to the hospital they have different varieties we have um months some for months some for years and i think if we, if we get into that right now we might not finish so yeah. if you want to so i'll just leave it there and then uh, come back Continue. for more yeah. lessons later um anyway, my... <laughs> hey no thank you y'all very interesting i've just off of the based of since y'all asked about um creams and stuff what about the hairball ones like there's this new one i think it's called okra's okra water does that work yeah, I've I've been seeing that um that they have personally I have no idea but I like it natural I like to keep it natural and the okra water I mean okra has in fact it's good to take okra uh, okra and it's good for you to be doing all of that probably it may not directly have an impact for your sexual intercourse or it might not improve it per se but I approve of it not ah. for that purpose but I do approve of it go ahead take okra it's very good for your system it's good. yeah. You know, I was going to say, for example, um, obviously, like we say, it's a muscle, right? So if it's all about healthy eating, and I know I bang on about this all the time, but healthy eating exercise, the number one proven way to actually tighten um, down there is to do exercises. So pelvic floor exercises really, really help. And that's the one thing. So like all these medications or you know herbal remedies what they might do is they might be good for other like you like okra okra is just generally good for you so they might have components of things which are good for your muscle and might help with muscle health but not specifically for vaginal health so and i mean there are things like we talk about cranberry juice as well usually when you have um um UTI, so urinary tract infections, you can say, you know, cranberry juice helps with the acidity of your vagina and things like that. So these things help with the general health of the of the organ. But to say that its main purpose is to tighten it, like Kujo was saying, I think I agree with that. There's nothing that will actually tighten, except for exercises. The more you use a muscle, the better it becomes, isn't it? So the more I exercise my arm muscle, the bigger it becomes, the bulkier it becomes, the same with down there. So if you really want to tighten, uh, uh, pelvic floor exercises quickly how do you do pe pelvic floor exercises if you pretend that you're trying to push out Kojo, can you help me with this <laughs> like uh, <laughs> if you pretend that you're trying to uh release some stool from your back passage yeah. you do these um oh no when you're peeing if you try to stop the pee that's actually the best way to do it so anytime that you're peeing midstream halfway through your peeing try to stop the pee and hold it for a few seconds and then release the pee again. That's actually exercising those muscles because it's close and open and close and open. And... Sorry, I won't get too much into that. So let's go for the next question. Uh, right. um, I think a, a question came to me. Um, someone asked um, if, um, is it hormonal imbalances lead to infertility? Yeah. I mean, no, this is, um, yes, that it's actually a leading cause of infertility in women. I may not be able to go into deep, but um yes it does because the moment um an irregular imbalance of hormones um during um with reproductive health one or both of the partners like whether the man or actually the woman can actually make it very difficult for contraception because you need some of these hormones to actually it's like you are preparing this some of these hormones is like it's preparing the way to re receive um the sperm that is actually coming it's a whole factor so if you're having if it's imbalance if let's say you need a and B to be together so that they will be able to actually like receive the sperm, the semen that is actually coming. And one is imbalance 
obviously it's like a gateway so one is not really functioning very well so it may not be able to like enter and then do the needful so in a layman's language that's how i actually explain it but it's more physiological maybe at a better time we might go into it and then explain it better deeper yeah i can see one in the chat um I'm about to so there's one from abel who's um who's asking that what are the symptoms of um, menopause 40 i'm 42 years difficult in sleeping i get hot flashes i get annoyed very easily symptoms of menopause yes um okay so hot flashes like i don't was it the same person who, me who mentioned it yeah okay so hot flashes this hot flash maybe some people might not know but sudden sensations of it like you feel that your body is actually hot and all that sometimes it's accompanied by sweating and then yeah sweating mood swings um you have mood changes like um i've forgotten his name is it mr jonas or something i've forgotten his name yeah jonas yeah it's ability they will feel uh, they'll be angry and then all of that these are some of the signs another sign is vaginal dryness there's going to be reduced um, vaginal lubrication it leads to discomfort during um, what's it called sexual intercourse so i mean you look at the age um you realize that anytime you have intercourse with um, your partner there's vaginal um, dryness and then all of that Sleep disturbances, difficult sleeping, you, um, you, you can't sleep, um, you'd be having night sweats and hormonal changes and, and all of that. Then again, bone density loss, like I mentioned, the person will be feeling bones, may don't pay more dreaming and then all that. It's very necessary that you go to the hospital, they check your estrogen levels because it definitely decreases. And all. So these are some of um, the, the symptoms or the signs that you probably pick up and then see. That okay, fine. The person is probably hitting, and most importantly, the the uh, the, uh, the menstruation stops, like you don't see it again. So the moment it stops, and then they start experiencing these things, I mean, you have a, a spot on over there. I hope um, I did well over there. Yeah, and I mean, I, I mean, coming from it depends on where you are geographically. If you're like in um, Africa, and it's treated differently, and if you're obviously in Europe, it's differently. But yeah. Us sometimes in the I can speak from my experience as a UK practitioner, but we take some things for granted because you can have hormone replacement therapy when you've got uh, menopause, and they sometimes helps with some of these symptoms. Obviously, if you're in other countries, you might have to pay for this. So because of the cost, of, you know, cost of living, and all these things, the people might not actually use them. But the hormone replacement therapy actually really, really helps uh, with some of these symptoms. So like going back to what Jonas said. We cannot skip the menopause, but there are some of them that can help with the symptoms. Maybe not so much irritability and mood symptoms, more of the vaginal dryness, the hot flushes, mood swings. But, you know, sometimes these things actually perpetuate the irritability. So if you think about a woman who's feeling warm all the time, but if then they open the window, they're feeling really cold, they can get really irritable because it's like the environment is not working for them. If you think about, you know, maybe every time they go to have a sexual intercourse with their partner, their husband, you know, they're not able to enjoy what they once used to and they feel like there's a bit of friction in the face. Because it's like every time she's not enjoying the act of it, you know. And so, so some of these things, So some, if we can treat some of these underlying conditions, it might actually improve the mood of the woman. So back to Jonah, maybe if you can find a hormone replacement therapy, speak to your doctor about it, that could be able to, you know, Jonas, I see your hand up again, but we'll go, we'll go back to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to you, Jonas, but just before Jonas, Mustafa has got his hands up as well. Mustafa. Uh, hello, doctor. Well, first of all, thank you so much. I think uh, you give us a lot of insight, especially when it comes to, I mean, me as a person, I didn't consider some of this, uh, the mental aspect of all of these things. And it's very interesting to hear it from a professional. And to my question, I say, you drew October, yeah, no, I'm on full post. Men should, like, oh, let me be very literal, not to be disrespectful, but Omoka say one man is to one breast. And the, the question is that, the, do these things work? Say uh, when men breast, uh, when men um, press uh, and suck breast of their partners, it reduces the risk of breast cancer. Is this information true or false? 
Dr. Mustafa, affectionate. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Mustafa, I'm sure you know the answer yourself. Do you think oh. that? Uh, please, I don't have interest in women's health. <laughs> My interest in, is in other fields. So I want to know about this one. <laughs> Um, I think it's a myth. I mean, these are um, some myths that has been there since, since, and I really don't personally, I mean, I haven't come across you sucking breast. I mean, when when cancer is forming, sucking of the breast won't change it. Early detection is very important. It's not going to really help. I mean, you're just exercising the muscles and then all of that, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't have much of effect like that. It's a myth that I think people are still proving it. Maybe if I should further and then all of that, maybe I might take it upon my research and then I'll probably see. But personally, I don't think it really does much because if you have a problem, sucking of the breast is not going to solve it. If it's a medical problem, you need to see a specialist. Early detection is very important. So let them keep on posting. Let them keep on sucking the breast. It's very necessary. It is good for the woman, it is good for the man, but most importantly, if it's a, a medical condition, just seek a professional help. Well, well, in my opinion, I think what the they try to say by, you know, one man, one breast, and second on that thing is if you have a partner, if somebody is constantly and frequently going somewhere, they are likely to see changes. So I think maybe, <laughs> you know, I mean, if I ask you, that's what I said. I said, the reason why you should be letting them suck or you should be letting them touch is because if somebody, if they are doing it every day and suddenly a lump appears or suddenly there's some changes in the skin, they might actually be the better person to tell you, ah, yeah, <laughs> to know, you know, so it's like, like Dr. Kojo said, definitely um, it's clinically and medically, you know, it doesn't make any difference. But I think if we're thinking about it, maybe logically or in other terms, and uh, Dr. Kojo, you won't agree with me. I mean, it's very like you. It you are right. I mean, especially mm -hmm. when it's one person, because if there are multiple people, they might not be able to tell the difference. That, that we, you have to keep it singular. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question, Doctor Mustafa. <laughs> Thank you, doctors. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, we uh, we now have Jonas again, Jonas. Um, wait, wait, before we come to Jonas, let's ask the, the somebody wrote in the group. I just want to give everybody a chance. AJ. Okay, yes, AJ. So we've got a question from AJ, which covers, is it possible to ovulate during menstruation? Dr. Akos, I'll, I'll give that one to you. Hey, only the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is it possible to ovulate during menstruation? Um, the way the body works, the answer is ideally no, because the the way the body works is, you know, when you're menstruation, I'm not going to go into specific details because there are hormones that are play during ovulation. There are specific hormones that are raised and during menstruation, there are specific hormones that are raised and both hormones are usually work um, <clears throat> contralateral to each other so when one is raised one is low when one is low one is raised so ideally and and your body responds to it so the reason i'm not mentioning the hormones because i can't remember maybe a doctor could you help me this one but there's uh you know there, there there are a lot at play here and um one of the hormones when it is raised it promotes the ovulation so it promotes egg being released from the from you know um fr from where from the, from the ovum traveling to the uh, uh fallopian tube and going into the uh, the um, uterus. Now, usually for pregnancy to happen, one of the hormones has to be really high and then it keeps the lining of the uterus ready for the egg to implant into the uterus. But usually when that, um, when that doesn't happen, when the hormone is low, then everything will sort of come out and that's when the menstruation happens. So what I'm trying to say is that the hormones that work for ovulation and the hormones that work for menstruation they cannot coexist at the same time. So ovulation does not happen at the same time. Now I'm thinking, I'm I'm assuming the question you're trying to ask here, saying can, why is it that people can get pregnant when they have had sex during their menstruation? Now that's because of the way the cycle is. So if you think about how, if you depending on how many day cycle you have, so if you have a 30 day cycle, 28 day cycle, if your cycle is irregular, Mostly people who have regular cycles are able to track their cycles. So it's easier for them to tell them, I can get pregnant here. I cannot get pregnant here. There's some people who don't have regular cycles or whose cycles are different. So someone might have a 28 day cycle today, might have a 40 day cycle tomorrow, might have a 35 cycle. So if you're bleeding for five days and then you stop, 
then ovulation started. But if you bleed for three days and maybe you stop, so I'm talking plenty. But what I'm trying to say is it really depends on the person, right? And it depends on what hormones is going for. So even though ovulation does not happen at the same time as menstruation, depending on the length of your cycle, they can overlap at some time where you can get pregnant uh, right at the end of your menstruation. Dr. Kojo, I know I've said a lot there, but <laughs> does it make right. sense? So, yeah, it makes sense. Well, um, what you should also know that when you get to your menstruation, they happen in cycles, they happen in phases. We have the menstrual phase, we have the follicular, we have the ovulation, we have the luteal phase. Whilst you are menstruating, something happens. At a better time, we might probably just pick menstruation so that people, maybe the men might probably, the women might also benefit from it so that you understand the cycle itself. So, you know, you have to move from phase one to phase two and then phase three and then all of that, like it keeps on going. So when you start your menstrual phase, it's like your uterine lining is shed, then you go to the follicular phase where there's developing of something we call the ovarian follicles. It takes the uterine lining. Then ovulation is when you release a mature egg from the ovary. So it is phases by phase. So it's not possible that, okay, you have moved to phase three, then or let's say you start phase one, then you can get pregnant. No, you move ahead and then you keep on going. And then the moment you get to, let's say, stage three, it's not possible that you probably come back. But like she said, if you know your um, your your days, how like how many days you actually, it can actually change. So you just need to know. And then the, the woman is supposed to know there are signs of ovulation. I mean, you know that you are actually ovulating. Some of these things people don't know. So when you come to the hospital, sometimes we teach you when we feel it is best, especially when you've been trying and you're not getting um, um, pregnant and all that. We can actually give you some sign. I'm not going to teach right now because we have actually exhausted um, a lot of time. So ovulation itself has its signs. And the moment you see that, you probably know that you are actually ovulating. So they happen in cycles. So you move from one, you go to two. It's not possible that you can start from one and then three is already happening. It's not like that. It takes time. It's steps. So mm. one day at a, at a later date, we'll talk about it. And just to touch on the pregnancy question I asked as well, how can you get pregnant when you've just menstruated? So if you think about that, if you're on the last, if you're in the last days of your bleeding stages, if you think about a sperm, a sperm can survive up to five days in a woman's body so if you've even had sex like halfway through your menstrual your menstrual cycle and you've not you know you've not used a condom or you're not on any contraceptives and that sperm is tucked away somewhere in the tubes and then you start your ovulation because if you look at the phases the ovulation phase actually starts right after the menstrual phase so if you've ovulated and within that five days if you have a strong sperm that can stay five days and even go the extra mile and stay maybe 5.5 days edging to six days then that sperm could actually fertilize the egg. So that's why, again, you can still get pregnant. And that's why we still advise that even if your menstruation, don't think, oh, just because I'm bleeding, I cannot get pregnant. You can still get pregnant when you're menstruating. Okay. Um, you doctors, uh, just to remind you that we are not doctors. So when you're explaining less medical words, please. So don't <laughs> you understand this? You know, we don't know some of these words. Sorry. <laughs> just bear in mind for the next ones. I've got some questions from YouTube here, obviously, um, since time is going. So I'll, I'll ask them two at a time. So we've got one here that says, how do you properly help your spouse if she's one of the women with a very painful menstruation? And then the next one, what are the benefits effects of masturbation for both men and women from a medical standpoint? I can always touch, uh, re uh, record the second one to you if you forget. AK, would you take one so that I pick one, whichever one that you, so that we can actually fast track it since we are uh, the expert. So I'm just a supporting that. So please stop. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, sorry, the first one again, I, I um, got hold of the second one. What's the first question again? Um, what what do you how do you support a woman? Okay, I'll take that one. All how right, so painful uh, medication. Okay, what I, I'll add up to whatever you say. Okay, yeah. Um, so the painful menstruation again. I mean, the thing of women's health is so loaded. There's so much involved, and it, it, we wouldn't finish if we start today. But just you know, what I will say is usually doing menstruate. The reason why a person can have really painful menstruations is all to do with. It could be an underlying condition like endometriosis. It could just be the way that, you know, their bodies build. Maybe they, they don't have... Sorry, about endometriosis is a condition. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Yeah, it's, a, um, it's a medical condition, which basically it, it's a lot involved, but you get really painful periods as 
as an and heavy bleeding as well. So but it, it could just be the way their body's built, maybe that you know their pain threshold is not as high as other. It could be a number of things. It's like saying why do some people get more painful labor than others? You know, we can't really explain it actually. We don't know why that is. There could be a number of reasons. The best way for you as a partner to support them is just be there for them, you know. Um, even if they get angry at you just for breathing next to them, you know, because your mood sings, I just take it all in. I know it's difficult to say, like, it's not good for your mental health as well, but just try your best um, hot bottle, hot water bottles to like so, sort of hot water compressors or like hot towels to put on the, um, the tummy really helps. Tummy rubs really helps. Foot massages really help um you know warm drinks so hot chocolate you know just pamper them essentially just pamper them because pain and heat work very well so if you're in pain um painkillers heat rest and you know just be there for them that's the best thing i can say and obviously if there's a way in which you can see a doctor to, um to find out why the pace is being the pain is being caused and how you can treat the pain i will advise you to do that but in terms of things on the side this is what i would say all right. So um, I think she just said everything. The, sometimes it's it's not normal. Like my doctor friend always say, BBI is normal, but it's not normal. Sometimes some people have naturally, some people have that. But sometimes you, it can actually be due to um, an associated condition, maybe a BB, and that is causing it and all that. So it's very necessary that you actually go to the hospital and then they probably take it. It's like they will, they will take their time, take your history and then get to know why. Has it been like that? And if there's any intervention that they can actually do to help, like they'll help you. But basically, she just said everything painkillers, you need to rest in a hot water bottle. It works perfectly. People don't know, but actually it works. But don't abuse the, the pain medications. You don't have to abuse it. Um, the second question about the masturbation. It's a very sensitive topic, especially with our mother's here and all of that. Medical standpoint of view, um, masturbation itself, um, according to research, it's just like sex, and I want to believe that most of us here have probably had sex before and then all of that. I mean, when you have sex, it kind of reduces stress, it relieves tension, it improves your sleep. These The benefit you get from it, the pleasure point of view, like whatever that you get from it, is more like the same thing. But it has been said and it has been researched, but I also want to take it upon myself to do a research on that. But that it says that it's for a man, I mean, it reduces the risk of um, prostate cancer and then all of that. But um, I feel if you have your partner around, why would you want to be touching yourself? I don't think it's, it's I mean, find your partner. That's the reason why you need to talk to people, talk to women. When I started, I spoke about social. I mean, approach the woman, talk to them. The woman to agree for them, go to the hospital, run the necessary test, come to get them married give forth it's very it's very necessary so i feel to me i don't think i would advise because sometimes you for the men if you don't know when you keep up masturbate uh, masturbating you know there are blood vessels right um that pass through your pennies and then all of that sometimes you you it become one day one day to become weak that one day you realize that when there's time for you to stand up it will be sleeping and it will be making fun of you so it will be making more so it's very important. Too much of it is very bad. But I wouldn't advise that you continue to do that. I mean, if your partner is not around and then that is what works for both of you, you can carry on. But that is the reason why you need to have your partner around. So speed up your process and talk to people. Talk to the woman. And women are built yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, doctors. Um, Dr. Akons, anything else you'd like to add from a general standpoint? Well, from a religious point of view, I would just say, I know like this is where medicine sort of... That is why I say it's very sensitive. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. But like that's where medicine branches with because like according to research, yeah, but you know, if we're looking for a religious book. So I'm not going to touch on it because it's too controversial for me. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to move on from that. And uh, I will just like to acknowledge everybody here again. Once again, thank you so much for joining. But we're going to uh, uh, take our last question. And I will try and um, I've seen that there's some comments in the chat. So after the last question, I'll just quickly go over the comments in the chat. But uh, Jonas, since you asked the first question, why don't you wrap up with the last question for us? Um, but uh, me and I... Uh... Ah, yes. Wow. <laughs> the question is... Uh... Um, it, it, like we talk about the, we touch on the uh, this um, pregnancy and the vagina, the issues that can cause like few like some few things that 
they are, like what I want to know is, is it normal for a woman to get pregnant and maybe nine months it goes beyond? Is, is, is it like maybe it's about the woman, like maybe a, like new womb, there's a like problem can cause or like issue can happen with the womb whereby the woman, the, like the pregnancy can cross the limit, let's say nine months. Um, is that a problem? Because I was 17 months. So it's, I, 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 and I wasn't, the thing is, I was having issue with that. No, I didn't want to believe But My mom is well educated, so she knows a cycle. I don't need to educate her by exactly. She knows what to say, and um, so is it? Is it maybe? Or maybe she tried to wait, or maybe on your baby was like issue or ni 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 wound be one baby. That's why I was over over like over overstayed in in in. You know what I mean? In the womb, and uh, secondly, with the um this um um like menopause, it, it, we mentioned about some few issues about the menopause, like um, this uh, hot and cold kind of like flashes. But do they also talk to themselves? Because the, the signs of menopause, you know, do they also talk to themselves? Because my partner, you know, sometimes, not in Ukasa. So I name her, say, you are having a self and staff meeting on Pesa Akasa, you know, because that, that's as I you are talking to yourself and there's nobody there. So you're having a staff meeting by yourself. So is he also one of the signs that he's going through that? So this is some of the questions I want to know. If it's normal that you can have the like that beyond the nine months, is it a, 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 a vagina problem or is normal? Or is I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so um, that's my question. So if I don't know if you have ever heard of prematurity and then I mean post them and then all that, but. Um, anything can happen during pregnancy. That's why I touched on the fact that throughout the process in a woman's life, they need us, and then it's very important that you study whatever that is going on. Yes, it can actually cause panic and fear when you are expecting a baby, let's say, within this nine months, and then the baby, the woman decides to deliver before that. It can actually go beyond the nine months that you are actually saying, but this is where you can actually, um, you have to, we have to intervene because it can actually cause some health conditions like fetal macrosomia like the baby might be having it can actually complicate the woman it's um, herself and then the, the baby that is actually coming so sometimes when they go beyond term when they go beyond their nine months it is advisable that we actually propose that okay fine we'll probably go in for cesarean session so that the woman won't have any complications and it, it's not going to complicate on the baby so it happens it's something that happens um, um, I don't know. Your mom wouldn't be the first person. A lot of people have gone through it. Some people have even gone through worse. Some people have had an experience whereby the baby was in and then the baby was even dead and they, did, they didn't even have no idea. They felt that um, like there was the baby is still alive and all that. So a lot can happen during pregnancy and most importantly, you are supposed to need a skilled professional so that someone can actually be monitoring the steps the stages of pregnancy is very important. When it comes to your second question, where you said she was actually talking to herself, it's the same thing. It, um, hormonal imbalance. They will be sitting there and, like you're saying, they are talking to themselves. That is why mental health is very important. But you see, the moment you start calling her or have a staff meeting and then all of that, I feel um, if you understood what she was probably going um, going on, um, what was wrong with her or whatever that is, you might probably not use um, or yes, staff meeting and ask the visa because it's 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 a big issue. When you say that, she may probably not react, but she will take it in and then it's actually going to affect her mentally. But she might probably, she might even exhibit the mental issue in a different way. But the moment they start talking, like a whole lot of, some people might even go out and then they will start working and then they will come back. They don't even know where they went to. I mean, a lot is actually going through their heads when they get to this stage. It can even happen during pregnancy. I mean, time is um, um, far past, but I saw a woman at the ward, and the woman was rushing that. The woman was feeling pains and then all of that. We brought this woman in, and we asked what the problem was. That is the reason why the woman left home, because the man was not giving her the attention. So she felt so about hospital at. The man will actually go and then buy it. So if you don't understand some of these dynamics and some of these things that are happening, 
you might probably overreact and then you won't understand. So, like I said, during that phase, they need our support. And um, through it all, they were with us. They gave us babies. They um, Even our mothers, they gave that to us. And then we are supposed to be with them while they continue that, their journey. So, how I ended, I don't know if Dr. Akos has something to add to that. Yeah, no, I think you've pretty much said everything. I mean, that 17 months is the longest I've heard. I know that definitely people can go over and it doesn't. Listen. In this day and age, I don't think you go past 10 months because we we induce you anyway. So if yeah. you're over by like um, nine months and like two weeks, you'll get an um, induction of induction. labor. Yeah, so made back in the day and usually babies don't make a past more than even 12 months so, so i mean 17 months is definitely a stretch and uh yeah but well done to her but yeah definitely it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the woman's and usually if it's a first but if you're are, are you a firstborn if you're a firstborn usually firstborns take longer to come out and that's just what we found out so yeah no um thank I'm you the you're the firstborn oh that makes sense no fourth fourth fourth, fourth. i'm the fourth fourth born. Yeah. the first ones yeah. Take longer as well. Yeah. But did no, the but... first one has any like did the first one also yeah. like last anyway? It, it's so just... it took me it, it took me four years before I start working. Because I was over I, I like one Miami. She said I was no I was cooked. I was cooked. I was cooked. Yeah, mean, because you were all the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, yeah. the moment you keep longer, like <laughs> you will start having like conditions and then which is not even good for you and then so whatever your age is, just add another six months to it. No, thank you so much for interacting. Like I said, I'm so sorry we cannot answer everyone's questions. We're already over by obviously we started quite late because we had some um technical difficulties, but so that's why we've just gone over. But we we do try to stick to time. So the next time that we have this, we will have it from eight to nine. Uh, so it wouldn't go over this today is obviously we did have technical difficulties so i apologize for that in advance um all the people i've seen perp you've talked about we should talk about perimenopause we'll write that down we can come back for another chat and we'll talk about perimenopause our next chat i've seen a lot of questions about menopause it seems like menopause is a big thing so we'll put menopause down and we'll talk about it as a topic by itself and uh, so if you want to know more about these health talks or you want to get information about when they are because we'll do them once a month and um, just uh, we invite you to join the ot media tv on social media on the whatsapp platform that's uh, where the community is so you can ask any uh, you know we, we'll give you information about when the next show will be or when the next health talk will be and all of ot me media shows as well you can follow us on social media uh, facebook uh instagram ot media media tv and but we just thank you all for really joining us today. we thank you um dr kojo for your time today i would usually ask you to wrap up or give us some ending words but i think so what can you now thank you for having me um my course in abna and ot media um it was a privilege for me to be here and then i want to thank my mom i think she's on the line um i hope she learned something you know the mothers they don't take medical advice from <laughs> uh, welcome mommy as so many we thank you for joining us um there's a link in the chat for OT Media WhatsApp. Just click on it or OT Media Community. Click on it. As I say, you'll get all the updates about our health talk. Please join us next time. Uh, who will be having Abna? Yes. So next week, we will be talking about colorectal cancer and we'll be having Miss Rita Benchy, who is a nurse practitioner at, of colorectal cancer at uh, St. Thomas Hospital. So please come with your questions, come come to learn and come and ask many questions and get to know more. So we will be hoping to see you all next week. And just like my co-hosts have said, thank everybody for joining. And we hope to see you next week and every other Wednesday following that. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. And uh, hold on for this um, advert before you go. Mr. Mankwa. Me wo fasi wo se ni sika bani edi e wiye ni project no. Esu de bia me wo fasi ka mani e wo problem. Ene mre mu. Na monte tap tap send en ka. Eh no so ne di e. Tap tap send e easy, fast and secured way. Wo beti me send this e ka free amano ne. Aba Ghana bank account and as a mobile money account. Wo ntu ya transfer fee bia. Sa, a wo be ni sai. Chira ni sai wo nko app store na Play Store. On download the tap tap send app no. Or download the app. Ebe busan so promo code. Oma de pet TV shim.
Obenya five euros, five pounds, and I said ten dollars on his first transfer. And you make quack quack of friend a catch. Tabby, me yan ye. A sons a tap tap sent at the good news, Abba. Tap tap send the guinea customers, won't he? Or the tap tap send wallet, Abba. I know about any say. So we are customer, who you kisses here. Who bet me a call tap tap send up on no accurate wallet or so. And it's a rate in the cost of now the Sikako go wallet. And I said, Po bet me out to Susun Kakran Kakra. And the abre sema, opes or send the Sikaba Gana. No answer was send the Sikana Bagana. And I said, Oba, my Gana Moon. What in here you should see Kai or wallet? No, no, tia, 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 tia. And you said to say you should mama or Gana Hey, no. Sapa, pepe. Says here, tap tap send that Renashim. Copium were United Arab Emirates, Netherlands, and Austria. Tap tap send that now. Papa, no, no. no. Introducing Nature's Secret for Health and Wellness. Turkey Berry Organic Premium Tea. Unlock the power of wellness with Turkey Berry Organic Premium Tea. Made from the powerful Turkey Berry, locally known as Abedru. Our tea is packed with natural goodness. Simply brew a cup and you're on your way to a healthier you. Experience increased vitality and a boost to your immune system with every sip. 100% organic, pure goodness from the earth. Our Turkey Berry Organic Premium Tea is your secret to an invincible immune system. Turbocharge your health and keep those seasonal bugs at bay. Raise your iron levels naturally and rekindle your energy. Boost your vitality, kickstart your day and embrace life with enthusiasm. Discover the secret to sustainable weight loss. Turkey Berry Tea helps you shed those extra pounds naturally and effortlessly. Visit our website now and order your Turkey Berry Tea. Experience the difference and unlock a healthier and more vibrant you.